a um, <laughs> she's <so> new. <laughs> I don't remember ever hearing that before. She came out um, on the upgrade. Ah, very nice. Um, that way we can share it out. I was actually talking to Dawn. I think they're going to put it on the Synod YouTube page um, for people that can't be here tonight um, to sort of watch it and get the information. And I'm also going to be sharing um, the presentation with you as well. Um, so we'll just start with uh, some quick introductions um, and then I'll share my screen. Because once I share my screen, I can't necessarily see everybody and I like to see everybody during these sort of like introductions. Um, just so we get a sense of who's here, what congregations we have here. Um, and so we'll do that before we get started. We won't spend a long time though. We'll get through this. So hi and welcome. My name is Deborah Porowski. I am the youth director at my home congregation of Faith Lutheran Church in Hillsborough. And I sit on the um, youth ministry mission team for the synod. And this is my second gathering in which I will be serving as the gathering synod coordinator, um, a role that I love to do. I'm so happy to get to do it again. Just so you guys all understand, um, each of the 65 synods has a gathering synod coordinator and we're trained directly from the gathering leadership. We do a lot of online training, but twice we get to fly out to Minnesota and get some in-person intensive training then. Um, Minnesota was one of the very last things I did before um, COVID struck last March. I think we went last February out to Minnesota. Um, so we get to sort of be on the ground and see the city a little bit and do some tours and get a lot of training. And then the 65 of us go out into our synods and we share the information out with all the leaders. Um, so I'm kind of your go-to person for any questions you have about the gathering, because either I'll know it, or I'll know where to find it, or I'll know who to ask to get the answer. So, um, so that's me, and I'm the person you're going to want to uh, reach out to. So we're just going to go around. I would like to know, you know, introduce your name, your congregation, and I think what's interesting is let us know um, if you've been to a gathering before. If so, how many? And do you know if you're planning on just being an adult leader to go with your congregation, or are you planning to be the primary adult leader for your congregation? And if you don't know yet, that's fine too. So I'm just going to kind of call on people around my screen so you don't have that like awkward pause of like who's going to go next. And so we're going to start with Mark Rizahoff. Thank you, Mark Rizahoff. I'm serving as the vice pastor at Holy Trinity in Wildwood right now, have been for about the last two years. Um, yeah, I've been to a few national gatherings, like starting in 1991, uh, so I've been to 10 as an adult leader, and like I told Janice, I'll get it right yet, sooner or later. Um, hopefully, we, I'll have a small group from Holy Trinity, but there's an even better chance that I will be uh, going as an adult leader with another congregation that has a small group uh, where their pastor is involved in the gathering in other ways, uh, so I'll be joining his group and from that church. So that's how I'll get there. Good. So glad to have you there again. Um, Janice. I'm Janice Provost. I'm from Holy Cross and Tom's River. I've been to three gatherings with kids and one with, as an adult leader, as an adult volunteer. I don't know if I'm going to this gathering or not, but I'm going to try to organize it and get the kids and get it going. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, Tammy. Hi, Tammy Snow from Redeemer in Sacasana, and I've been to three when I was younger. Um, haven't been as an adult yet with a group of kids. Not 100% sure I'm going with this group either. Right now, I'm just um, getting the information out to you and trying to get a group uh, going. Good. Thank you. Thank you for coming, and thank you for you know all your work to get kids to come with us. Tom? Uh, yeah, I'm Tom Gravel. I'm uh, with the uh, Living Waters uh, in Ringo's. Uh, I, I've been to three gatherings uh, as an advisor and uh, hoping, hoping to be able to get to this one also. Sue? Hi, I'm Sue Schumhorn, also from Living Waters and Zion Oldwick. Um, this will be, if I go, this will be my fourth gathering, I think. Yeah, uh, always as an adult leader. 
this, I, I didn't say this too, but it's my fourth, this would be my fourth gathering as well. I started in 2012 in New Orleans and have been to them ever since. So, and I did not go to any growing up. So I didn't know what it was until I was an adult. Uh, Nancy? Hi, I'm from Pompton Plains. Um, I've been to six gatherings as an adult. I'm actually getting information together to pass on to my congregation because I applied to be an adult uh, volunteer this year. Fantastic. Thank you yeah. for getting all the information tonight. We have another Nancy. Hi, it's Nancy Baltimore. I'm from Good Shepherd in Somerville. Oh, I thought I was on mute. Sorry. I'm okay. from Good Shepherd in Lutheran Church in Somerville. Um, this would be my third gathering as an adult, but I've been to two as a youth many moons ago. <laughs> so I've been to Detroit and then just the last gathering as well in Houston. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I, we have a third Nancy. We do. We have a, a bingo board I'm of Nancy's sorry. here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am from uh, 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 Prince of Peace Lutheran in West Windsor. Uh, Pastor Frolke couldn't be here tonight. He asked me to get some information. Uh, Brandy Hebert also has two kids in our youth group, so she might be interested in going. Um, I might be going, so I'm basically here trying to get some information, and I've never been to a youth gathering. Good. Oh, well, you might be in for a treat, or you're going to get information for people that are in for a treat. So not to be outdone by the Nancys, we also have at least three Jens here as well. So uh, Jen Blanford, would you like to introduce yourself next? I am from St. Matthew Morristown, that's South Jersey, um, and this will, will be, I'm committed, fingers crossed, um, my third gathering. Um, I, my first one was Detroit, which I committed to the day before, um, and then my second one was with Houston with the second gen, I hope you introduce, um, and we worked out the kinks with that. So I'm excited for a third one to just smooth sailing. Um, be planful for that one. I will tell you, somebody told me that like the third one's like, the, that's the golden one. Somebody gave me that advice once. The first one, you just kind of go and you're like, what's happening? Mm -hmm. Second one's a little rough because they are comparing it back to the first one and it's not exactly the same. And why is this not the same? And then you're like, oh, because they're not all the same. And then you go to the third one and it's a little smoother. So Our travel for the one. second one was really rough. So fingers <laughs> crossed. I, prayers up to God. I am hoping, yes. All right, so uh, that, uh, we will segue right then into our second, Jen Dunzelman. Hi, I'm Jen Dunzelman. Um, I, yes, was the second Jen with Jen who just introduced herself. I'm actually from St. Mark's in uh, Oakland. However, we tagged along uh, with Jen's, we've been uh, part of Jen's church's tur uh, youth group. Uh, so I went with my oldest, Riley, and for my first youth gathering ever which was incredible. However, next time, this next time when we go and I bring my little one, uh, we're going a day early so that we don't have to worry about taking five, four flights or whatever stopovers to get there. <laughs> right, Jen? <laughs> they, had, they had some travel issues, our gems, but they got there. That's, they are the example of being a non-anxious presence and that things will go wrong again. And uh, Jen Fisher, let's round out our trio of Jens. Hi, um, I'm from Grace Lutheran in um, Phillipsburg, and I went to Houston. That was my first gathering as an adult and my first gathering ever. Um, my husband and I are slated to go um, to this one. Uh, he's not here, he's with um, my daughter at Pole in class. Um, but we're not sure if we're going to have anyone except for my daughter now, because there's been a lot of people kind of pulling out. We had a group, um, and we're going to find out on Sunday we're having a meeting. So we'll see. All right. Fingers crossed for you. And I think we're probably all feeling that way, worried about, you know, if the commitment's still there. So I hear you on that. Um, Hillary. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Hillary Delapena. I am a part of uh, Living Waters in Ringo's. Um, this will be my third gathering and my plan is to go as an adult leader. Good and I hope that you do. Um, Jeff. Hi Jeff. 
Hey, how are you? Good to see everybody. Um, I'm Jeff Miller, pastor at First Lutheran in Clifton, New Jersey, North Jersey, just outside of New York City. I've been to many, many youth gatherings. I don't even know how many, so I'm not even going to try to say that. They are all different. I will affirm that, but they're all great. Uh, just very different. Different obstacles, different joys, each and every one, but it's really about the kids and who you're with. Um, I have no idea. We would have a small group this year if we went, um, but we just got back to inside. Uh, Clifton's been pretty rough. We've, we got hit pretty hard with COVID with deaths in the congregation. Mm -hmm. So we're only getting like 20 or 30 people in worship. So I, I'm kind of envisioning what would next summer being in a crowd look like. So I'm getting information. Hopefully we'll go, but really it's, it's even hard to fathom where we are right now, so. All right, and I'll touch on some of those concerns, Jeff, as we go through the presentation. So hopefully, I mean, there, obviously there's no answers at this point, but um, some very valid concerns. And I think most of us are planning on bringing some pretty small groups and we'll talk about, you know, congregations sort of partnering together um, to, you know, make the uh, experience a little more meaningful, you know, to get a little bit of a critical mass going. You don't need to have 25 people in your group, but you know, eight or nine might be better than two or three. So, but that, you know, we'll definitely be talking about that over the next uh, couple of months. Kevin, hi, welcome. Hello, how's everybody? We're good. Uh, I'm with Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Somerville. Um, this will be my third um, gathering and as a co-leader. Um, so we, we have, uh, I guess, uh, Pastor Chelsea couldn't be here tonight. She had a council meeting. So uh, Nancy and I are filling in and uh, getting started with preparations. So we're looking forward to it. Good. Thank you for being here with us. Um, Deb, we're just doing some introductions and if you've been to a gathering before. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Deborah. So my name is Bev Grazioli. I am at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Hainsport. I haven't been to a gathering in quite a while. In fact, it was 2003. I had just gotten married, got off my plane for my honeymoon, and jumped on another plane the same day and went to Atlanta. So I haven't been to a gathering in, oh, in about 14 years. But it is, it's just, it's just such, for anybody who hasn't been, what a worthwhile, amazing event and worship opportunity for both kids and honestly adults just all alike um and i'm happy to be part of this group i just finished training uh, boundaries training for my v our vbs program so that's why i'm a few minutes late we're glad to have you and i was gonna say if anybody whose name i see is there and tracy's uh, little picture showed up just when i was gonna say that so tracy why don't you come in next so, hi this is tracy post um i'm from zion lutheran church in saddle river um, actually a mom of, um, we have a few, we have a, I'm a mom of one of our, a few of our students who are of age to attend the youth gathering. I've never been, um, we're still in the, we're in the process of calling a pastor. So I'm kind of helping out with, um, the whole youth gathering situation at this moment. So I'm also on another zoom call at the same time. So I'm kind of double dutying right now. So you will lose my, my visual in a few minutes and I apologize for that. But my daughter who has gone to one in Houston and I have a son who's looking forward to it. And I know we have maybe one or two other kids in the um, church in Saddle River, New Jersey, who are also interested in attending. Um, in the past, we've gone to confirmation class with two other local churches, so I'm not sure where we are yet, if we're going to join up with them or if we're going to just be going on our own. I'm not quite sure what our situation is. I'm eager, eager, eager to learn more about the, the gathering in general, but thank you. Great, good. And I don't know if Mark or Joelle or Riley are, are just listening. If they're busy, don't have to jump on. You can just listen. There he is. There's Mark. There's Riley. Go ahead, Mark. Hi, I'm Mark Setzel. I serve as pastor of Christ Lutheran Church in Wilcove Lake, New Jersey. I'm, uh, I've got three kids running around, which is why I'm videos off and et cetera. But um, we have a couple of kids of age, but I'm not sure yet if people are, in, are ready to go um, all the way to Minnesota. I've been to two gatherings. I went to Detroit and Houston. Uh, and was the Synod Day coordinator, one of the Synod Day coordinators for Houston. So I hope to go again. 
Good. I hope you do too, Mark. Riley. Hi, Riley. Hi, I'm Riley. I'm from St. Mark's um, in Oak Glen. I went to the gathering in Houston. It was my first and only gathering. Um, and I'm looking to go this year um, as a volunteer, um, probably like a worship assistant, I think is what I've been looking into. Um, I got to fill out the application still, but I'm planning on going. Good. We're going to talk about that. Those applications are due on July 22nd, Riley. So you got to make sure you get that filled get out. On that. <laughs> get on that. If you need a recommendation, Riley, just saying, just make sure you do that. Um, and yeah, everybody. All right, so hi and welcome. So glad we have a wide variety of people here, people that might be going, people that definitely wanna go, people that aren't sure if they're gonna go. I think we're all in the same boat. Do we have kids that are even still interested? Do we have kids whose parents are gonna want to send them? We don't know. But I think with a love of the gathering and a love of this ministry, um, that we put our best foot forward. And if it means we take 100 kids from New Jersey, then those 100 kids are going to have the best time of their life for that week. And us adults will come together and we'll figure out a way to make it meaningful and wonderful for them. So if you feel like you're only going to get one or two kids from your congregation, don't feel like that means you can't go. Like we want you to go. We'll pair you up with other congregations. We're going to figure all this out. We can do it with housing. We can do it with getting ready. We can get you there. So if you've got a kid that wants to go, we're going to make sure that they get there. I, that is my goal. That's my goal while we do this. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to share the presentation with you. I won't be able to see you all. If you have a question, you can save it to the end. You can put it in the chat, but I'm just kind of going to go through my, um, my presentation. Just so you know, this is the presentation given to us by the ELCA. So 65 synods are going to see this presentation. We personalize it. So look for some pictures. You might recognize some of your friends and some of the pictures in there. Um, but it's, this is the information that the ELCA has asked us to share with you about the gathering. So without any other further ado. Hey, Deb, Deborah, real quick. Yeah. I just want to say thank you so much for your enthusiasm. It is really, really awesome. That's all I wanted to say. Thanks. Thank you. I love the gathering. I love it. I'm in the Amen. same boat. Amen. Yeah. I'm in the same boat as you with my own congregation. They're like mowing my lawn outside. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Um, I'm in the same boat as you and I'm worried. Like, I don't know how many kids we're going to get, but I'm like, I'm going to find one and make them come with me because I'm going. So somebody better get on the plane with me because I'm planning on going, but I love it. And the enthusiasm is real. Um, okay. Literally, can you hear that? The lawnmower? Okay, no. good. It's just bothering me. No. It's eight o'clock at night. Like what? I live in a townhouse complex. So like, what are they doing right now? All right, anyway, share my screen. All right, here we go. Here we go. View present. Welcome to the 2022 ELCA Youth Gathering Boundless God Beyond Measure presentation. Um, the gathering is going to take place in Minneapolis, Minnesota. The dates have changed from the 2021 timeframe. We are now going July 24th to 28th. Um, Jen Dunzelman mentioned before about going out a day early. Um, my first gathering, we stayed a day later. In the next two gatherings, we went out a day sooner. Um, a lot of congregations do that to get to enjoy the local life, to get to do some sightseeing, to get to do something fun, whether you find an aquarium, you find a museum, you go to a park, you go um, to NASA when we were in Houston. Um, I'm gonna put a little recommendation out there. I do like getting there early. I, I've done both now. Um, you're tired at the end, that last day in New Orleans, dragging the kids through uh, the um, aquarium. They were like, when are we going home? Um, but also going out a day sooner, you'd like get a day, you get a day to get the lay of the land, you get a day in the city. So, um, I'm going to assume my congregation is going to head out on July 23rd. You will, once you get assigned the hotel, be able to tell the hotel you're coming out a day early and your rates for the gathering will apply if you extend on either end of the gathering. So those are the dates, but you might want to, you know, you know, think about going out on the 23rd or staying to the 29th. Um, this is the adult leader training. My name is Deborah Prowski. We sort of went through this and I am your gathering center coordinator. So we kind of went through this already. This is, I think, our Tom's River group from the last gathering, but we already introduced ourselves and said hi. Um, the agenda for tonight, here's a synod day picture for y'all. 
um, is to go through some general gathering information. And I did put um, gathering programming information in this presentation as well. We're going to talk a little bit about registration, about getting ready to go to the gathering, about choosing adult leaders and resources that are available to you. Um, this page, when you get this, if you get a copy of this, if you want to watch the video about the gathering, you can. I know I showed it last year when we did one of these, and um, it's the same one. I feel like I've seen it 50 times, so I'm going to guess some of you have seen it, and it's nothing you probably don't already know about the gathering, so I'm going to skip it for now, but you can go back and watch it. It's just an introduction to the gathering. Um, this is the gathering theme. Um, it's usually a, a Bible verse is often the theme. Um, and they, this year's theme comes from Ephesians 3.14. Um, and this, that this in particular part of the verse, I want you to know all about Christ's love. Although it is too wonderful to be measured, then your lives will be filled with all that God is. And when the gathering um, leadership team discerned this Theme, this is sort of what they came, came up with. We're bound, bound by our sin, by the expectation of others, by poverty, by isms that try to divide us, and so much more. We want young people to imagine the boundlessness of God. What are the stories of God's people, both in scripture and modern day, that share the awe and wonder of just how vast our God is? What does it mean? What does it look and feel like to live a life that is filled with all that God is. And that is what came from the hearts and minds of the gathering leadership for the theme for this, for the 2022 gathering. The mission tonight, not the mission tonight, the mission of the gathering is um, faith formation in teens. They'll say that over and over again, faith formation in teens, which will be done through worshiping together, interactive learning, Bible study, service, and fellowship. This picture is here is from the last gathering, that's our Synod Day, that's the Synod Band and a bunch of um, the youth up singing along with uh, Larry Olson to something there. Um, and here I wanna address a question I know that's come up. I put out a Google Doc and a couple of people actually asked this question in terms of who is eligible for this gathering. And unfortunately, uh, it does change from who would have been able to go in 2021. So for the 2022 gathering, you have to be entering grades eight through 12 in 2021, meaning you will be just have grad, the oldest kids to go to the gathering will just have graduated in 2022. So um, that does mean the kids that would have been able to go this year who just graduated in 2021 are not eligible to go to the gathering as a participant, they are eligible to go as volunteers. They're not eligible to go as a participant. And I know the gathering leadership already took a lot of heat from that. Um, a lot of people unhappy with that decision. Molly Beck Dean, who's the director of the gathering, she gave a really great um, video, short presentation, um, explaining, you know, basically this mission, this idea of faith formation in teens and about um, how important the process of getting ready to go as a group is. And if you let these teenagers sort of go off, whether it's off to college or their first year of working, how do you get them ready to attend this with the rest of your congregation? How do you get them to come to getting ready? How do you get them involved in, um, you know, the, the fundraising and things like that? And that's just in terms of where they are in, that, in their life. I mean, they might right now be like, yeah, let's go to the gathering. And they're going to spend a year at college and are they going to want next summer to come back and go to a gathering with all with the high school kids. Um, there's some concern too with just the age range of somebody who's just come out of high of their first year of college with somebody entering high school. So there were a lot of reasons they thought about it very prayerfully, but it is for high school age kids. So I know that that's bad news for this year's senior class, um, but they are encouraged then to sign to go as volunteers if they would like to do that. Um, once you're on site, the goal is to affirm and challenge the faith of these youth to experience new perspectives and ponder their vocation, have conversations about vocation, you know, how many kids I think even talk about that. And I love these last two, bond with their congregational group. I would put in there bond with your synod and learn about the ELCA. You know, I, I think there's members of my youth group that know more about being in the ELCA than 
um, some of the adults in my congregation do. And I think they get that from the gathering. So I think it's another big um, benefit to going and to being surrounded by Lutherans from all over the country. Um, there are two pre-gathering events that um, are certain youth are eligible for. Youth of color or whose first language is not English, they are eligible to attend MILE, the Multicultural Youth Leadership Event. It is the three days leading up to the gathering. The cost is $190 per person and the expectation is that you would go straight from this to the gathering. So it's sort of a safe place that's designed specifically for youth of color or whose first language is not in English for them to be together and have some experiences together before rolling into the gigantic gathering. So that is one option. And I, like I said, I'm gonna share this presentation and um, the link is embedded um, up here in the logo where it says made free. Um, and then there's the table for young people living with disabilities and a caregiver um, because um, most of the youth and young people that attend um, the table do have pretty significant disabilities and they can each then bring a caregiver with them. Um, and again, the expectation is you would do this in your very intentional group and, and roll that then into the gathering. It's also $190 per person. You don't stay in gathering um, hotels usually. They come and have you stay maybe on a college campus where you're all together. Obviously the table, they would be um, accessibility would be a, a, a big forefront in choosing where they're going to go. Um, but those two things are um, the pre-gathering experiences. If you have anybody in your congregation that's interested in them, you, know, you can let me know. Um, Jessica Clark in our synod is actually one of the, uh, on the leadership for the table. So I should be about that for me. I'm going to send you to her. Uh, but I can definitely get you more information about those things if you are interested. Deborah, I have a one question about um, eligibility for table and for mile. Do is it the congregations makeup that makes them eligible for mile or it's their own it's their own makeup. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They're really trying to um, have a place for for those youth. If you would have had, if you were to have a different question about that or want special consideration, we can put you in touch with somebody, but it, it's meant to be for the youth themselves. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So then I put a little in here just about gathering programming um, in case anybody's new or if you just want to have this information at your fingertips. So the gathering is basically broken into three main days, service learning, synod day, and interactive learning that all you know, 30,000 kids do in three different groups. You've got 10,000 doing each of the um, days in a different order. Service learning, um, you could think of it sort of as your community service, but notice, you know, they're very specific to call it service learning. It's a teaching and learning strategy that integrates meaningful community service with instruction and reflection to enrich the learning experience, teach civic responsibility and strengthen communities. We often say we're not going to Minnesota to fix them. We didn't go to Detroit to fix anybody. We didn't go to Houston to fix anybody. That's not what we do. We go in, we partner with local organizations that are already doing God's work in these communities and we join them in their mission. That's what we do. Service learning is about listening to stories. It's about connecting with people. It's about understanding what is going on in their city and what they need. Um, sometimes you get to build a house, sometimes you're painting a wall, sometimes you're planting a garden. There's all sorts of different things to do, but the key is the learning. The key is um, learning about the community, about the people and the experience. So one of your three days. I will tell you little things. Everybody gets that orange t-shirt to wear on your service learning day. You will be given a service learning companion that will take you to your um, service learning event. You don't find out till you're on the bus the morning of service learning where you're going. And um, they give you lunch on service learning day. And food's a big deal at the gathering. So anytime that you get lunch, you're like, woohoo, bonus. So um, that's service learning day. And then there's Synod Day. There's a picture of the New Jersey Synod at our Synod Day. It's one of our rotation days. We meet as a synod for worship, Bible study, learning, and more. The bishop comes, presides over our worship service. There's communion. We in New Jersey, you know, we love to have a good synod band going on. Um, it's a really great day for us all to be together. 
In the past, we've also had Synod dinner following Synod day, a tradition that I very much plan to keep alive. So we all spend the day together and we all go out for dinner together and we have just this big, lovely New Jersey fest all day. It's so, so great. Um, we get t-shirts if anybody wants to purchase them. Um, and it's, it's just a really great day. Now this year, I will tell you something different about Synod Day. In the past, it's always been held in um, big like conference rooms and hotels, which actually makes feeding the people that are running Synod Day very, very, very difficult because hotels do not like you to bring in your own food and hotels like to cost and uh, charge an arm and a leg for food. Synod Day this year is going to be taking place in congregations. We are going to be out in churches doing Synod Day because we are out in Minnesota, the land of the Lutherans. So there are plenty of churches that are happy and ready to host us and they are providing lunch on Synod Day. So two of your three days now, you're getting lunch, which is kind of a big deal. They said, don't get used to that. That's probably not going to happen at the next um, gathering, but it'll be really great to be in congregations in and around the city and that's where we're going to host our Synod Day. So we're looking forward to that. And um, I believe Anthony Briggs, Catherine Schaefer from Crossroads are our Synod Day coordinators this year. So we'll hear more from them. And then the third is the Interactive Learning Day. Oh, look, we got Nancy's in a picture. She's in our meeting here and she's in our picture um, with the bishop. Interactive learning is this day of um, events and activities and learning and games and quiet things and noisy things. There's just so much to do. We're in a big convention hall. Um, your group can walk, wander around together. Um, there's going to be some different things at Interactive Learning this year. You'll get more information about them later, but it's a day to learn. It's a day to explore your faith in a wide variety of places and ways. You stay together as a group, you can divide into small groups. Um, there's usually challenges. You can donate blood. You can, um, we often have done the walk for water. Um, really great things um, to do on that day. So that's the, those are your three main days. Every night, there's mass gathering, um, which is just amazing. It's, it's like nothing if you've never been. Um, if you've been, you know. If you know, you know. Um, to know that everybody in that room is a Lutheran youth or they're an adult who loves them is powerful it is so powerful i always love like you know kids cheer for jesus like somebody says something about jesus and the kids go crazy and cheering and they're so happy um in houston our own uh mark's granddaughter um rebecca brisehoff was one of the speakers it's just an amazing experience all around um to get to see somebody from new jersey up on the stage um songs you were often crying. Um, it's amazing. So that happens every night. Um, and on, on, well, on the last day, which this time is not a Sunday, but on the last day, we gather in the morning and we do Holy Communion for 30,000 people, which is phenomenal and like nothing you've ever seen before. And Bishop Elizabeth Eaton would preside over that service. So it really is very special. It's a great experience. Um, so as you get ready to promote this, the recommendation is to reach out to every youth in your congregation so they have the option to choose this amazing opportunity. Like whether you think they've been real active or not, um, I think for something like this, you know, a, a personal call, text, email, the kids don't check their emails, um, call or text or actually face to face in church, make a list of your kids and let them know about it. Invite them to come to an interest meeting. I think it's one of those things, unfortunately, where it's going to be like, well, I'll go if so-and-so goes. I'll go if so-and-so goes. I don't want to be the only girl going for my congregation. You know, talk to kids about that. If they want to go, let's find a way. Let's find a way to get them there. Let's find another girl in another congregation that really wants to go, and let's introduce them to each other, and let's get them on this gathering together. Um, but you really have to promote it. You have to let people know about it. You can encourage your congregation to follow the gathering on social media, follow the blog, talk it up, start talking to people about it, make sure that they know about it. If you have kids in your congregation that have gone before, enlist their help. Can you come to a youth group meeting and talk to the kids about the gathering? Can you come tell them what you loved about it? Um, 
but definitely start talking about it, start promoting it. So registration, registration um, will, will open in the fall. The next screen has the dates on it. Just so you know, regis participants register as a congregational group and one adult will serve as the primary adult leader. So your congregation will probably take more than one adult, but you have to choose one person to be the primary adult leader. I'm gonna tell you right now, that person is responsible for getting an email and having to pay for housing. And that's it. Everything else, if you are taking three leaders, you can divide everything else equally among your three. There are no other emails will come out from the gathering with information to just that person. Everything else comes out via the G News or via their Facebook page, okay? So, you know, if, if Jen and Jen are both going and they're like, oh my God, I can't believe only Jen Blanford's gonna get the emails and Jen Dunselman's not, no, 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 no. Jen Blanford's just gonna get housing and payment information, that's it. If Jen Dunselman signs up for G News, she's getting everything else there is. If you are going to go with another congregation, let's say three congregations wanna to go together, you can register together because that's how you're gonna get housing together. But again, the three congregations have to choose one person to be their primary adult leader. That person, again, the only two emails they're gonna get are about housing and payments, but please make sure you're picking an adult leader that likes to check their email. That's not an email you want to miss. Okay. Deborah, can I tell you, like, can I just say that that's how our congregation has gone the last three years, the last two, two gatherings, is with other congregations. So if you have just a handful of kids and you, you don't feel capable to do it, reach out because there are other congregations that feel the same. Yep. Yeah, and go together and you have to pick one person and don't, I don't want anybody to feel afraid to be the primary adult leader. And I don't want anybody to feel like slighted if they're not the adult leader. Okay, it's an important role to get those emails. But other than that, you don't feel like you are going to miss out on something if you don't get to be or if you know, so Jen Dunselman doesn't have to worry about her congregation missing something because Jen Blanford is the primary adult leader. Because like I said, it's just going to be about housing. Bev, do you have a question? Hey, no, I just had a comment for, um, I think it was Riley from Oakland. Um, I know Pastor Laura is absolutely, would be absolutely happy to help you, but if you know you need a congregation to go with, St. Paul's and Hainsport, we're not too far away from you. We would love to have you and um, invite you to some of our activities. You can get to know the kids and um, it'd be a, be a really great time for everybody. Awesome, Bev, thank you. There you go. See, we're all going together. Yeah. Anybody that wants to go, we're gonna get them there. Um, you will need to know your unique five-digit congregational ID number. If you don't know it, you ask your church office. That's going to that's gonna be who knows it. Um, the gathering can let you know that too, because that, you're going to register under that. That, you know, listen, even in like your synod, how many faith Lutherans are there? Like the gathering is not going to be interested in the name of your church. They're going to want your five-digit gathering ID number. So make sure you know that. Like I said, if churches, um, register together, there'll be a place in it to say these are the other congregations. Because the ELCA does like to know how many congregations are sending youth, so um, there would be a place to mark that. Um, and they're doing registration differently this year, and the gathering leadership is very excited about it. There's going to be, I think it's an app, I don't know if it's a website too, I guess it is, and it's all going to be done through that. So if you've done this before, you know that like you got this weird like the ELCA told you it was this hotel, but then you had to call the hotel and you had to send a check to the hotel. It was not, it wasn't real smooth. Everything's gonna be done through this one um, application this year. And I've not seen it yet. We heard about it like a year and a half ago when I went to my training, but they are very excited. They said it's gonna be very, very streamlined. One place to get your hotel and to pay for your hotel. So I'm excited about that. So mark your calendar now because there will be a registration webinar on August 19th. I'm going to talk about all the webinars in a little while. And just like this, they will, um, they will record the webinar and post it for you. Um, but mark your calendar, August 19th, the ELCA will do a, a registration webinar where they will walk you through all of the steps of that. So, and their webinars have been really great so far. So here are the dates, drum rolls. Early bird res registration. 
starts September 22nd through November 21st. Um, so base, and that's your best rate. Obviously, they want, you know, they want to know upfront how many kids are going. So they offer an early bird registration. Your best rate is $350. $150 dollar non-refundable deposits due at the time of registration, you have to pay the rest within that date range, meaning you can't pay $150 for early bird registration and then not pay the rest until December. They want the rest of it by November 21st. Okay. Uh, no, I said that wrong. Rewind. They want the $150 deposit by November 21st if you want early bird. If you want to be considered early bird, you have to have that. Balances are not due till June, okay? Um, but that 150 is due in that time frame. So don't register on September 22nd and then think you're paying in December. If you're paying in December, you're gonna pay regular registration rates, okay? I'm gonna tell you, here's a little pro tip from Deborah. I require the full registration for my kids. Um, I think, and I know this is not true of all families, but I think that for many families, 150, if you had to cancel, if you had to change your mind, like 150, you can kind of maybe deal with, but 350 to me is like, you're going, like, because it's not going to be refundable. Um, again, that's just a pro tip. It's something that I've learned at, at, as I see a lot of like deposits, um, you know, people are like, eat quick to pay a deposit and then change their minds later, but do what works for your congregation. Um, so I know Jeff had said before, his congregation's not really in a great place maybe to be thinking about this. So it's only 40 extra dollars a kid, Jeff. You, if you wanted to wait and make your decision in February, registration only goes up to 390. If you are really, really, really unsure, you wanted to wait till May 22nd, um, registration goes up to 440. But those are all the registration dates. If your congregation does not feel comfortable making a decision that quickly, um, you do have those other dates, just know that then it's gonna charge a little more. I will throw in here now that the Synod is planning on having a Synod retreat, actually the weekend of November 19th through 21st. Um, and so that would be a great place if you have kids that are thinking about going, maybe you can get them to this retreat get them to meet other kids in the Synod, get them to spend a night away from home um, and see how it goes. Um, we got the blessing from the Bishop and we are moving ahead. We're having it at a hotel. Since we outgrew the YMCA, if you were at the, our last um, Synod retreat in 2019, we were busting the seams at that YMCA camp. Um, I do think our numbers will probably be down, but we are moving it to a hotel. So information about that will be out soon. We're just putting the planning team together now. But I, I thought I'd mention it here as- um, September, when is that? November Repeat. 19th through 21st. Thank you. Yep, more information will be out. So those are the, those are the dates. And again, this whole presentation, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna put on our uh, Facebook page. So I know probably you guys are taking notes, but you're gonna see it again there. Um, housing, housing's a big thing. Housing and food, those are the big things, the things people worry about. Gatherings, contracting with a variety of hotels. Um, there's a couple different pockets of areas in and around Minneapolis where people will be staying, um, uh, but they contract with a lot of different people. The um, price they're giving us now to think about and to plan as you start to work on a budget Congregations are encouraged to budget $159 plus an 11% tax per room per night. So are you just staying for the, you know, four or five nights of the gathering? Are you adding a day on here and there? Um, we're not exempt from hotel taxes in Minnesota, so you got to pay that 11%. Room types are also going to vary for budgeting purposes. You can expect two to four people, so budget for three people per room. It seems to work out okay. Um, three people per room for how many nights you're going to have. I will tell you that housing can get a little crazy and can get a little stressful. When housing comes out, I mean, God bless them, they're finding housing for 30,000 people. You get rooms, you, you're bringing nine people and you realize you get room for eight. And you just have to call the gathering and work that out. I will tell you, they will not put a chaperone by themselves in their room. So if you're just taking one male, um, they're not going to get a room by themselves. Another congregation will, will get a room for, for males. 
Um, and we, again, as a synod, will help you work all that out. So uh, male chaperone from my congregation, the male chaperone from Tom's River, they roomed together last year. Um, it's just they have, you know, they're trying to fit all these people in. Um, and so we'll work it. We'll work it out when we get there. Um, not when we get there. We will work it out when the assignments come out. I'm just telling right ahead of time. It can always be a little stressful, but we've never not worked it out. We've always figured it out. Beth? Thanks, Deborah. Just a quick question. Um, in regarding to when you register, so people who necessarily who register, say, like, is the early bird um, grouping, there isn't, like, necessarily preferential treatment for hotel and rooming assignments versus or closer to, you know, like the, uh, the mm -hmm. event center as opposed that to people. Is, that's a great center, question. You know, later, do, are they further out or is there, so, is it just kind of a all mix? That's a great question. Actually, I should have mentioned this. So with the last gathering and when, when I go to the webinar, I'll make, I'll make sure I know this again. With the last gathering, yes, people that did early bird or regular registration were guaranteed housing with their synod. If you did late registration, you weren't, gav you weren't guaranteed housing with your synod. Now, in Detroit, they didn't house us with the synods. In Houston, they did, and we loved it. I mean, I loved getting to the elevator and seeing my New Jersey friends when we got back at night. So I'm so glad they're doing that again. And then that makes sense. Like, you know, if you're going to add in late, then you're just going to get the hotel rooms that are left. So that was an incentive. Bev, I'm not 100% sure they're doing that this time. In terms of location, no. Um, in terms of location, that's going to be, you know, Minnesota's synods are going to send more kids. They're going to need bigger hotels. So where's the bigger hotel located? It might be located closer, but it might be located further away. A hotel that's further away also might cost you less money. Um, you don't get a choice with that, though. You just get assigned. And I'll tell you, too, that you could work it out that you're ready to go and put four kids in a room and they don't have that, those big rooms available and you're stuck putting two kids in a room. And all of a sudden, your cost is a little higher because you have a few extra rooms. Just know that, again, they are trying to get 30,000 people in hotel rooms, and it's not exact, um, and to be really flexible with that. But, um, Bev, that's a really great question. I will confirm if um, housing with your synod, you know, is kind of tied to getting your, res getting your registration in on time. Good question. I can see, Bev, and I can't see a lot of other people. So if anybody, somebody put a question in the chat. And I can't see it from where I'm at, so I'm going to look at it later. I'll answer it. Hey, Deborah, I put something in the chat, but it was not a question. It just had to do with the uh, Synod gathering in November. Okay. So you can see it later. Okay, perfect. Um, if you have not already either ordered a handbook or downloaded the handbook, you want to do that. The um, gathering puts out a handbook with a lot of great information in it. A little pro tip, it's very similar from gathering to gathering. It's pretty general in information. Um, because they put it out so far in advance. Um, but there's a lot in it about just tips and tricks. There's a lot in it about um, making covenants, about making budgets, um, about fundraising. And it's free to download if you want to get that little spiral bound copy. I believe um, Old Lutheran sells them. So there's a lot of great information there and a lot of answers to a lot of questions will be in the handbook. This one, and this might be a great page, uh, you know, Jeff or his congregation, if they're having specific concerns, um, there is a whole page on their website about COVID questions. Um, the basic general principle is they're obviously going to have to follow whatever protocols the CDC has in place and the, and the city of Minnesota, city of Minneapolis has in place at the time of the gathering. So it's very hard for them to say. They do not foresee themselves requiring um, vaccinations, although they are highly recommending vaccinations for people that are healthy enough to do that, um, to gather together. Um, so Deb, yeah. you, it's Nancy. One of the quick things to keep in mind, if you're flying, depending on the airlines right now, that's gonna be a requirement. Excellent, very, very okay. good. Make sure we share that out with people. So yeah, that could be a big. That's really good to know. That's good to know. Um, yeah, it's it's going to be part of like you know you have your passport for traveling international. Now they're going to want to see your immunization record. Perfect. Okay, good to know. Um, the gathering has said if there's any kind of social distancing requirements still in, then they're probably not going to be able to have the gathering. 
and they're going to assess this again late fall, early winter. Um, they have said the point of the gathering is to be together. And if there has to, there's no way that we, there's no way to guarantee social distancing at events such as this. It just doesn't make any sense. Masks, they could probably do masks, um, things like that, but they, they, are, they are not oblivious enough to think that we're going to be able to do a gathering like this and keep everybody three feet away from each other. I mean, that's just, you know, not going to be realistic. Um, but the way things are shaping up now, they are very optimistic that we are going to be able to do this. But again, this page, elca.org youth gathering slash COVID-19, um, will have the most up-to-date information and answer more of your COVID questions there. And again, if you have any other COVID-related questions, you can get them to me. Um, and I can get them to somebody who can answer them. Um, finances, I mean, this is not a cheap trip. It's not, and I don't know what airline costs are gonna look like for next summer. I just don't know. Um, but it's an investment. I mean, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. This is an investment, and I will say this, on your families and your congregation. How important is this in the life of your congregations to send these kids and these adult leaders? Are they prepared to, to step up and, and contribute to it? Are they prepared to be involved in all the fundraisers for it? Are the parents and families prepared to make a financial contribution to this? Do you know what your church's past practice is and who's paying for it and how much you have to find all that out? It is a big deal. It is not a cheap trip, um, but it's, you know, it can be life changing to these kids. So um, it's something to work worth looking into and, and your fundraising for it is going to be a big component of your getting ready to go. Um, so I'll just put that out there. And I, again, I said, there's lots of fundraising ideas in um, the handbook and, and we as a synod, you know, we can keep having these meetings. We can have a fundraiser meeting where people, you know, share all their ideas. Um, lots of things we can do. Uh, if you don't have any idea how to start fundraising for that, don't fear, we will help you. There's lots of great fundraising and a lot of great experience just in this group right here that can give you ideas. Um, so what does it cost? Look, there's my group. That's my group in the airport. Actually, I put this airport picture in here so I can remember to answer this question. I have every intention of flying to Minnesota. Um, I'm not, the Synod is not planning on busing us to Minnesota. We bust out to Detroit, um, took two days. Minnesota's further than that. Um, and just to be honest, besides all this youth ministry, which I love, I have a full-time job. Um, I'm a middle school vice principal. Um, the thought of putting together a bus trip out to Minnesota is like way over my head. If somebody else wants to be like, that sounds like a great idea, Deborah. I would like to be the person to organize the bus trip out to Minnesota, honestly, be my guest and I will help you with it. But I do not want to be the one to have to put something like that together because that sounds very overwhelming to me. But you want to rent a van and drive out with your congregation or a congregation or two with you? Absolutely be my guest. There's more than one way to get out there, but I'm telling you, I do not foresee a synod bus. Um, but in terms of your budgeting, there's the gathering registration, which varies in price depending on when you want to go. There's transportation, which would either be your airfare or your cost to rent something to get out there. Once you've arrived, and I'm assuming most of our groups will fly, once you arrive, the gathering takes care of the rest of your transportation. The gathering gets you everywhere else you need to go. You may have to arrange airport to hotel transportation on your own, but that's usually pretty easy to do. Most hotels and most airports have transportation between the two. Um, but once you're there, mass gathering, your, your um, service learning, interactive learning, um, back to your hotel at night, the gathering does all of that for you. So the only transportation you have to worry about is getting out there, possibly getting to your hotel, and then if you do any excursions um, on your own. Food, again, that's another thing that you have to think about and worry about and plan for besides the two lunches you will get um, and synod dinner, which if we plan that will be something else. You know, you, I highly recommend, you know, breakfast in your rooms, you know, we pack a suitcase full or get down there and do like an Amazon pantry delivery. But, you know, let's have cereal and yogurts and granola bars be your best friends for the morning. Um, 
and then just worry about lunch and dinner when you're out and about. Um, on that aspect of it, have snacks with you at all times. It is amazing what like a granola bar, a cookie, or a pack of like fruit snacks will do to a cranky teenager. They're like, oh, you're not happy standing in line here. Eat this, eat this, eat this. So all of a sudden their mood's a little tiny bit better. Uh, and it's true for adults as well. I was like, give me a packet of peanut butter crackers right now. And then you're like, oh, I feel a little better. Um, snacks, snacks, snacks in your backpack, snacks in your hotel room, go everywhere with snacks and be ready to feed people. Um, makes a big difference. I did not fully get that until Houston. And I, we were like full on with snacks in Houston. I was like, this is nice. Who needs, who needs this? Who needs that? Um, again, housing, we talked about that, 159 a night plus 11% sales tax. Wherever many nights you plan on being there, uh, expect to divide that amongst three people per room. And then any, any activities and extras you choose to do. I do not recommend you cutting out on any part of gathering programming to go do something else. So for instance, the Mall of America. It is very, very cool. And there is a lot to do there and your kids might wanna go. Please do not go to the Mall of America during interactive learning. You know, go the day before or go the day after. Um, there's a lot of parks. You're gonna be able to do a lot of nice things. Don't miss mass gathering to go to a park. You know, you wanna do what the gathering has planned for you, but then before or after there might be activities to do. You could get out for meals. You could plan some nice meals during those days. Um, you know, there's always a chance to take a group out and get dinner or something, but just in terms of an actual outing to go do something, you know, do that before or after. Don't miss a part of the gathering to do that. In terms of fundraising, you know, two things. Obviously, you want to get bang for your buck, so you want to do fundraisers that raise money, but also that serve a purpose. And to me, that purpose is building a community. Um, you want the kids working together towards something, car washes, things like that. You know, just selling Joe Corby's pizzas, like, it might make you a lot of money, but do the kids have anything to do with it? Like, is there any bonding that's going on during that time? Um, so just think about both of those things. You know, you don't want to put a ton of work into the kids and not get a lot of money out, uh, but you don't want all of your fundraisers to be these big money makers that the kids have no, no skin in the game. You know, you want a little bit of both. Um, all right, let me get through. Adult leaders, choosing your adult leaders. And it might not be as big of a deal this time because it does, I don't think you're gonna be bringing huge groups with you. And you love this picture of our uh, synod staff at synod dinner the last time we went. But you, you know, choosing the adults to go is just critical for your congregational group's experience. You need to pick adults that want to do this that want to be actively engaged with these kids, that want to walk alongside them. Be really careful about bringing a parent that just wants to dote on their kid. Because that's not good for anybody. That's not good for the kid. It's not good for the other kids that are there. You know, um, I, my kids always have to, I always feel bad. My kids are always stuck with me being there. And I am very specific about staying away. Staying away and letting them have their experience. So be very mindful of that, um, that the kids need to have their experience to go. Some congregations don't bring parents. Other congregations only bring parents. Like, they, you know, I don't think there's a one size fit all answer, but I think that's a great thing to think of. You don't want somebody there who's just there for their kid. They need to be there for everybody. They need to like kids, they need to understand kids. Educators, people that work in schools are great people to bring. You can't have somebody that's going to be freaking out over every little you know, thing that might happen. It to be pretty easy going. It to be faithful people. Like if it, the person never comes to church on Sunday, like I don't know what they're, you know, what they're doing at the gathering. Um, you want faith leaders, you want role models, um, people that are gonna work with you, people that are gonna be involved in the getting ready, people that are gonna be involved in the fundraising. Like your, your adult leaders need to be like all in from the get go. And that's how you're really gonna have a great experience all together. Um, they're not chaperones. I know we all use, I almost use the word chaperone. They're, you know, the gathering really kind of steers away from that word. Because um, you're not just there to stand on the side and watch them. You know, you are supposed to, you know, worship with them, sing with them, hammer a wall with them, do interactive learning with them, pray with them, um, all of those things. So just be very mindful that you're picking a good fit for you if you're going somebody that you're gonna work well with and somebody that's going to interact well with your kids. Um, 
An effective adult, I used this phrase before, this non-anxious presence, caring, positive, non-anxious, unselfish attitudes. We are there for them. That's who we're there for. We're showing up for them. This is not, I mean, listen, don't get me wrong. You are going to have an amazing experience. It's going to touch your life. But that's not why you're there. That's the great benefit of going. You're there to provide them the experience and to be non-anxious about it. Because something, Jen and Jen will tell you, is going to go wrong. Something will go wrong. You, you know, the place is going to close. You're not going to eat. Your flights are going to get canceled. Uh, your adult leader is going to fall and end up in the back of a police car with her sprained ankle. Something's going to go wrong. How are you going to... What are your chaperones or your adult leaders going to look like in front of the kids? Are you going to be like, yeah, it's all right. Okay, that stinks. Let's pick ourselves up and move on. What's the next thing we're going to do? Um, look, lead unselfishly. Um, and honestly, the kids are better role models at this than we are. You know, if you ever hear about something getting going wrong at the gathering, a lot of times it was a, a chaperone getting upset about the way something was going, not necessarily the kids. Um, we're there to be graceful. We're there to show Minneapolis what Lutheran kids are all about. Um, so we want adults that are ready to lead the kids. So as you are choosing who gets to go, and I know everybody on this screen right now fits all of these perfectly, and I hope to see all of you at the gathering, but as you need to bring other people on board, I want you to think about all these things. All right, 803, we're getting to the end here. So before you go to the gathering, listen, their website phenomenal. Um, I think Tammy was telling me that whenever she gets a quiet moment at work, she's like, what's new on the website? Because they're always updating it with something new you haven't seen before. Um, so check their website for updates. The Getting Ready materials, they come up with this great curriculum. I use it for my youth group for the whole year, whether kids are going to the gathering or not. Um, they already had uh, a webinar about it, and the materials are online for you to download. It's 10 lessons around five themes that will go with the five days of the gathering. So it's the work that kids can do before they go. And it can be done with kids that are not attending the gathering. So getting ready materials is not about picking a place to have ice cream on Wednesday night and choosing your roommates. You don't want kids that are not going to the gathering to have to be a part of that conversation. But in terms of the themes of the gathering, what we talked about before about boundless love and God's love for you and overcoming the isms and the things that divide us, those conversations are good for all youth, whether they're attending the gathering or not. And that's going to be a lot of what's in the getting ready materials. Um, and the getting ready material is very customizable. So you can do it once a month. You can do it once a week. You can do it as a retreat weekend. Um, you can do it with another congregation together and they built it in so you can do it on Zoom and in person. So lots of different options. And then there's monthly webinars. Um, every month on a different topic, I've already talked about the fact that there's one coming up in August for um, registration the top of my head. I don't remember what the July one is, but the one in June was about the getting ready materials and the one in May was about volunteers. So they're really great to watch. If you can make them live, it's fun. Um, if you can't just watch the tapes afterwards and they're great about keeping them about half an hour. So it's not like a big chunk of your time and you can sign up for them right on the website as well. Again, we talked about this before for Riley. Volunteer applications close on July 22nd, so get your volunteer um, in. Mm, financial assistance. There will be, um, financial assistance is only for your registration. So if, if you have somebody in your youth group that you don't think can afford the registration, starting in July 22nd, you can apply for financial assistance. I don't get involved in that. So that's gonna be between you and the people in the ELCA. I can help you if you have any questions, but um, that's something you are going to fill out and go straight to the ELCA about. Um, and then you would get credited for um, your registration when you apply. Um, preparing your group, help your group set goals for the gathering experience that help the group be aware of others' needs, not just theirs. Um, you know, this is not about just going and, and, and your group, it is about the synod, it is about the ELCA altogether. 
I'm going to remind you to use the getting ready materials. Um, they include group bonding as well. Um, use preparing our mindset as a tool. I don't know what that means. I went through this whole thing before and I don't know, maybe that's something on their webpage. I'll look that up. I don't know. But on um, July 25th, there is a youth gathering kickoff celebration. I don't know anything else about it yet, except that there is one. Um, I'm hoping to maybe get my youth group together at the church to find out what that is about. So keep an eye on that. If you don't follow the gathering on Facebook, it's like the number one thing you need to do. That is their platform for communication. Um, they're on Instagram also, um, but really that they're going to communicate everything through that and through the genius. That's where you're going to get your most up-to-date information. Oh, and that's my last screen. So if you have any questions, that you contact me. For the gathering purposes, I use that youth ministry, youthmin.njcenet.org email address. If you already have my regular email address, feel free to write to me there too. I check both all the time. I'm like a phone person. I'm on my email all the time. That's my phone number. Please never hesitate to call. Although if you call me and like, I don't know who you are, you're not my phone, chances I'm not going to pick up. But you can leave a message. <laughs> and I'll call you back. But you can text me. Um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I don't know what Snapchat is. I don't follow that. Um, but <laughs> gatherings on all of it. The, the website, we have our New Jersey Synod um, gathering page. So we have a New Jersey Synod ministry page, youth ministry, and we have a separate gathering page. There are plenty of people in the Synod that won't be going to the gathering. I don't like to overload the Synod page with gathering information because um, that'll get annoying to people that are not going. So Big things I'll remind you on the Synod page about, but then everything else will get posted to the gathering page. Basically what happens is the gathering makes some kind of announcement or puts new material out. It goes out in the G News. It goes out on their Facebook page. I get it. I put it on my Facebook page. You know, you get it. You put it on the church Facebook page. And that's how the word sort of spreads. G News um, is a monthly newsletter that you can sign up for on their website and has, again, Pretty much everything you're going to see on the G News has already been on Facebook. Was about to come out. So stop share because that's the end of that. And um, and I've done a lot of talking. So any questions? Or did I answer every single one of your questions going into the gallery? Deborah, I have a question. We have. Um, a couple of kids that have allergies, the peanut, the celiac, yeah. all those. And they're kind of a little concerned about as far as like food wise and, and, you know, getting food or having food or the yeah. right food and stuff like that. So how can we kind of convince them that, you know, there's nothing to worry about. And, you know, as we know, as leaders, we will have, you know, certain things that they're available to eat and stuff like that, but just, that's a main concern when they go places in any retreat that we have gone to. It's like, well, I can't go because I have an allergy problem. Exactly. So that's a great question. And every gathering before you has dealt with it too. Um, they, the gathering will be very clear if they can't accommodate you for something. So on that Synod Day lunch, if there is not going to be a gluten-free option, you are going to know that way, way ahead of time so that you can bring something with you. It'll always be very, very, very clear. I believe the recommendation usually is with allergies that are that severe is that you can bring your own food with you all the time. You don't know, have something in your backpack. Um, the um, mass gathering sites will always waive their food restrictions for food allergies. They will say, they don't want you to walk in the door with a pizza all right, but if you've got to have something in your bag, um, you know, to feed somebody that has a gluten allergy, has a nut allergy, um, but it is something we are aware of. It is something that has been dealt with at every single gathering going beforehand. Um, I know I had a, a youth one time that had to have um, their medicine they took every day refrigerated, and we had to have a hotel room that had a refrigerated. So things like this, as you, you know, as you go through it, um, will help you sort of navigate all that. But I will say that they, if they know they're not going to be able to accommodate something, of like a pre-assigned thing, you will have plenty of advance notice about that so that you can prepare. 
And then, you know, do you just as the adult leader, a lot of that's going to fall on you that you know what they're going to eat. Going into this, you're going to know every meal, every day, where it's going to be. It's all going to be planned out. It's not all going to go like you planned, but you're going to have that in your idea. So you're going to know. Um, I made reservations to go to the um, Rock, Hard Rock Cafe. You, you will have already talked to the Hard Rock Cafe about that. When we choose a place to have Santa dinner, we will know that we want to have gluten-free options and um, nut allergies and all that taken care of too. So it is definitely a concern, but one that every, you know, 30,000 people did it in Houston and 33,000 people did it in Detroit. Um, and we will do it again in Minneapolis, but it is a, a valid concern. What else? Any other tips or advice or comments from people that have been before? Any, any? The only thing I was thinking of, Deb, when we, I was talking about allergies, we had um, a couple of kids that, you know, were on some medications and they needed to, you know, be, my, be reminded to take the medications. One of the advantages, I'm a nurse, so I, that's part of the reason why I volunteer, right? So I'm in charge of all the medications. We have a health checklist that the parents have to fill out and tell us what needs, what, you know, and the same with allergies. I mean, I have many food allergies myself, carry an EpiPen, so we always know who's who. And then we have certain kids that they know up front. And at that age group between the 14-year-old to 18-year-old, I think it's a lot easier to manage that, way, that part of it as well because they're very much in tune on what they can't and can have. Yeah. And a lot of times, they'll, like you said, they'll bring their own snacks and stuff like that. Good. The other thing I will advise is schedule bed check every night. It sounds really weird, but we had a system and Kevin can, you know, can attest. Kevin and I did Detroit and then there were, we had 20, I think 22 or 23 kids in Houston. So there were three of us in Houston, but we managed to keep track of who was where and what rooms and all that. Because I have to say, one of the good things is all of New Jersey was in one hotel and the kids really love that. You know, they would have a little snack downstairs in one of the dining areas or something like that, get to know each other. And even, some, you know, some kids in the area, it was really nice. But yeah, you want to do bed check because be mindful. I don't know how early the days are going to start, but I mean, I think of Detroit was on the bus at 7 a.m. So and you have teenagers that are not used to getting up and showering and being dressed at 7 a.m. Well, if they're not up and dressed, then they're not on the bus. They're, they don't, they lose, right? So that's another reason why you want them to get to bed at a decent hour so they're not cranky that first four hours in the morning. Very true. Um, while you were saying that too, I'll also mention that at every hotel, there will be um, gatherings, volunteers, um, specific for your hotel, specific for community life that can help you with literally anything. They, they are awesome, by the way. Awesome. They're oh, well yeah. trained. They stay at the hotel. That's what they're there for. I can attest to uh, first aid being uh, excellent also. I did fall and hurt myself in Detroit. It's a great story. Um, but uh, they were you know, able to help me. And um, it, it's easy to get to. The kids are all going to wear bands. They're going to wear these wristbands. Um, that are going to sh that have like the emergency inf phone numbers on it and stuff like that if there's a problem when they're in there. So I, I wanted to say to a mention about, um, you know, safety, because I think there are parents concerned about um, the choice of going to Minnesota. Yeah, listen, if you're going to go to Minnesota, go between July 24th and July 28th of 2022, because there's going to be more security around that city during that time than at any other point in the summer. Our own security in terms of um, adult volunteers that are go to the gathering for the sole purpose of making sure the kids are staying safe. Um, you know, they have their, their bands on. If they're ever found anywhere, they shouldn't be with a band on. They're going to get scooped right up and brought back to us. Um, it's really amazing to hear from the people that run the gathering how seriously they take the health and welfare and safety of these youth. Um, even just talking to transportation people, how mindful they are about keeping these kids safe, about transporting them safely. 
it is uh, people that feel called by God to do this work, not just people that are organizers. Um, and it's really great to hear from them. So, you know, if you have parents that are worried about that, rightfully so, but, um, and if you've been to gathering, you know that we look like this giant swarm of Skittles. I've heard, heard call that because you're all in your matching t-shirts. You're never anywhere by yourself. You are so surrounded by people. And even as a group, you're not by yourself. You're on a bus with people going back to your hotel. You're doing your um, service learning with other congregations. Um, maybe if you're venturing out to go to a meal by yourself, but I'll tell you right now, you're going to pass thousands of kids on the road and everybody's high five and everybody else. So um, I feel once you're down there, the feeling is very safe. And there's a lot of precautions put in place to keep an eye on the kids, but um, wanted to mention that too. Deborah, I did have one. Sorry, I saw Jeff raise his hand and I, sorry, Jeff. <laughs> um, I did have one question just about um, security and just the relationship that uh, the ELCA might have with the city as far as um, just the history that the city has had. For, there are some parents that may really feel reluctant to send their children. So I wonder if the, the ELCA has, or the gathering committee has really built a relationship with um, the city to really ensure parents that their kids will be safe. Yeah, you know, building a relationship with the city is so what they do those first couple of years before, you know, there's three years and this time there's four years between the gathering. And, and the amount of meetings that go on between the people of Minneapolis and our gathering committee, whether it's the people that run the, um, the transportation around the city, whether it's um, you know, the police and, and things like that. These meetings are like ongoing. These relationships are really solid. Um, and again, and I, I get the firsthand knowledge of that when I go to these things and, I, and, and we're hearing from the head of gathering transportation and how they have their meetings with the head of the busing and the head of the trains and, and things like that. Um, yeah, no, be, the gathering city is a huge part of the gathering. It's not just a place, it is a part of the gathering. If we are going, we are going to learn about the history of Minneapolis and Minnesota and the people that live there. I learned so much about Detroit when I went there. I actually learned, I will tell you, a lot about racism in our country when I went to Detroit. Those get, getting ready materials and what I learned about what happened in that city was eye-opening for me. Um, so it really, the city is an integral part of this. And I think if you leave Minneapolis feeling like that was exactly like Houston, then we missed our mark somewhere. It should feel like Minneapolis. You should feel like you learned something about that city, about their culture, about their people. Um, so Jen, yeah, it's really important to the gathering to have that kind of um, commitment and establishment and relationship with the local people. Jeff? Yeah, just following up on that, I think the concern about the safety, I don't even have that at all because I've been to, it, it seems like so many of the gatherings were planned three years before a really bad event happened and we wound up being in the perfect place at the perfect time. And I'll tell you that going to the gathering in New Orleans right after Katrina and gutting a house you know, where the conversations that I had with the youth and, the, and more the, the parents was, is it safe to go to New Orleans? You know, and then Detroit, there were the issues with Detroit. And then Houston, we had conversations, the hurricane just came through. Is it safe to be in Houston? And now it's Minneapolis. It seems like God's kind of a couple steps ahead of us. When you look at where we're going and what's going on, and what needs to be discussed and dealt with. Uh, it's really been amazing for me, like, and, and members of my church are now kind of saying that too. They're like, all oh, right, why are we going to Houston? And then there's a hurricane, you know? So um, I wouldn't worry, I, I mean, worry about that, but I think 
definitely the the security has always been top notch and and that's always been and i've been going you know so many times i can't even count anymore but um the one thing i want to say was just for for you first timers every it's been mentioned a couple times about the shirts um the first time i went nobody told me about shirts and my whole youth group felt left out <laughs> if you have not gone um a lot of a lot of churches will buy shirts for their church i've found screen printers near me that once i get a logo on um, file with them for the church they'll print them out in different colors um, the kids feel more part because they have these shirts i don't have to deal with now what's that saying on your t-shirt today so we don't have we take all that stuff out of it my kids are all in the same color on the same day so it's very easy for the families to pack it's very easy as you look around it's like oh what are we wearing today red you know today we're all wearing first lutheran red shirts if any of your kids get separated you're looking in this mass gathering of people and you're looking for the red shirt that matches you you know so it's um i recommend getting the shirts if you can we we get them really cheap um but we what we do is we get them for the kids, but at the same time we do a fundraiser and we sell the shirts to the to the congregation because our church all wants First Lutheran T-shirts and they all want to support the the kids. So we make a bunch of money and get a bunch of publicity for our church around the neighborhood, in addition to getting shirts. And the that fundraiser within our church pretty much pays for the shirts for our kids to go. So just something that we've done. Great, Jeff. Thank you. Um, and additionally, I'll, I'll add, Old Lutheran will do sh gathering shirts as well. Um, they're kind of fun too. They're going to be more expensive than, you know, what you might be able to get locally. But what can be fun about them too is that they come in a variety of colors and stuff. So like uh, we did the NASA shirt in blue for the last one. And then the group next to us had the same NASA shirt in yellow. And that group over there had the same NASA shirt. So like that's like a cool thing too. I will say this also, put something on the back of the shirts because a lot of the times you are behind the kids. So I found that when we went to New Orleans, we did the front of all of our shirts and I was always behind them because they walked faster than I did. Um, and it's just another thing I'd point out there too, is there's something on the back of the shirts. You can see them from the front and you can see them from the back. Um, but Jeff, I agree. Like don't pack any, well, you might at night, maybe want to change into something, especially after uh, like your uh, service day. But yeah, no question about what you're going to wear because on Monday we're all wearing this shirt and on Tuesday we're all wearing that shirt. I agree wholeheartedly. All right. Anything else? One of the things I always say when we have meetings like this is the point of this is not for you to leave and have memorized everything I said. Okay. Point is for you to feel like, all right, there's some planning going on here for the gathering. The ELCA knows what they're doing. They seem like they're telling Deborah what to do. Somebody's going to know what's going on. That's what I want you to leave here feeling that we're in control, that you're in good hands, that we got you, that we're going to have this happen. We all meet frequently throughout the year, um, times when we're together. I'll always look for an opportunity to like pull together a gathering talk. Um, if you feel like you need to have a meeting about something and you need advice, we can call people together. As we get closer to the actual gathering, we're going to have like very detailed meetings after I go out in February about what each day looks like. Um, you know, we'll be able to share all of that information with you. You are not going on this by yourself. If it's you and your daughter and nobody else from your congregation is going, you're not going by yourself. You're going with all of us. We're all going together. We're going to have a great time, all of us together. Um, if you want help in talking with your congregation about that, let me know. I have definitely done that. I've done it in person. I'm willing to do it via Zoom. Um, if you just don't feel like you have enough information to present this to parents, let me know. I'm happy to help you do that. Um, I'm going to share this um, presentation with you. If you want to then make a copy of that to use for your own congregation, feel free. All this information is public knowledge. There was nothing on this presentation that you can't share out to a parent. Um, 
but definitely just let me know. I'm so happy to help you present this to your congregations or a group of congregations. You know, that might be a great way to use Zoom. If you think three or four congregations might want to go together, we could do a big Zoom and I can do a presentation or I could just come to the presentation and if you have questions, um, pop them in answers. But it's, I'm so excited just to even be talking about it. You know, after it being canceled last year, um, I remember when the, the, they first put out a post, I don't know, in like April, something about the gathering. I was like, oh, look, they're talking about the gathering again. Um, gives me a lot of hope that we're really going to pull this off. It might look really different. It might be smaller, um, but I don't think that matters. It is what it is. It's, it's the experience God wants us to have. That's what we're going to have. We're going to have the experience God wants us to have um, in Minnesota in July of 2022. So, uh, Bev, you have a question? Hey, yeah, I don't, actually, I just wanted to have a, just a comment for you. For the people that will go, got like the right people will be there. So, um, for sure. And then the only other thing I just wanted to say is I had mentioned when I introduced myself that I had gone to a gathering like, yes, a long, long time ago, probably older than all of you. But at any rate, like this is historically the National Youth Gathering, for those of you who may have safety concerns, um, the, the, ELCA, they've been doing this a long time. And even back when we, I was in the, uh, we were in the Atlanta, in the Atlanta Dome and um, worshiping with 30,000 young people was just amazing. So they've been doing this a long time and they just, um, they, I just have to believe they're continuing to um, call on their past experience and it's just been getting better and better. So it's not like, it's not like Detroit or, you know, Houston was just the, when, when they started doing it, they've been doing this a long time. and. Even when I was in Atlanta, it was just incredibly well orchestrated and just a super experience. And I hope at all the faces, a lot, I know not all the faces, some of you said from the get-go, you were just gathering information, but I hope you re your face is replaced with another face from your congregation. Or maybe you enjoyed this Zoom so much that you're going to go back and be like, I want to go to that gathering. Um, but just any questions you have along the way, please don't hesitate to reach out. I love this ministry. I love this work. And I am so eager and happy to help you. So if there's no other questions, no other parting thoughts, I'll hang back for a minute if somebody had an individual question they want to ask in front of the whole group. If not, you can go. Have a wonderful evening. And uh, I'm sure I'll talk to you soon. Good night. Good night. I'm going to stop the recording. Thanks, Deb. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Thanks.